would you like to improve your health and keep your family safe? You're listening to the Healthy Home Hacks podcast, where we firmly believe enjoying optimal health shouldn't be a luxury. Healthy Home Authorities and husband and wife team, Ron and Lisa, will help you create a home environment that will level up your health. It's time to hear from the experts. Listen in on honest conversations and gain the best tips and advice. If you're ready to dive in and improve your well-being and increase your energy, you're in the right place. All right, here are your hosts, bow biologists, authors, media darlings, vicarious vegans, and avocado aficionados, Ron and Lisa Barris. Today's episode of Healthy Home Hacks is brought to you by Suzanne Adams, Inc. For the woman that has a story to tell, she knows her path, her pain, her love, her intuition, and her own unique magic can and will serve the world in powerful ways. This woman is you. You don't do anything halfway or aren't excited to go all in this year and speak your soul on stages, both big and small. Suzanne's TEDx talk has now reached over 3 million people. She spent the last nine years mastering the art of speaking her soul and spreading positivity and inspiration far and wide. And she's on a mission to help those that are ready to do the same because you have a story to tell. Join Suzanne Adams for a transformational four-day Speak Your Soul Masterclass designed to catapult you into the confidence and clarity you need to rock the stage, both in person and online. If you're desiring to share your soul in a more powerful way through speaking live or virtually, hosting workshops, your own or at corporations, then this is the perfect opportunity and conversation for you. Together, you'll dive into how to perfectly craft your story to magnetize any audience, how to attract more abundance and speaking opportunities, plus how to eliminate the fears that are holding you back on stage. Facebook and IG count as stages too. Head to the show notes right now for the link to sign up. This is the year for your story to be heard. If you have struggled with your health, despite months or even years of investigation and intervention, you're in the right place, guys. So be sure to stay till the end with us. You know, I just read an interesting article in The New Yorker titled, All the Carcinogens We Cannot See. And the article focuses on the known carcinogens that cause cancer, but also how a toxic environment and inflammation play a role in cancer. According to the article, a range of agents, including fine particulate air pollution, present in the air we all breathe every single day, may promote cancer by inciting an inflammatory cascade and spurring mutant cells, previously dormant, to form tumors. It is without question that environmental toxins are wreaking havoc on our health today. The prevalence of these toxins is posing a significant threat to public health, affecting everything from childhood development to adult chronic illnesses. In fact, very few people realize that there is an average of 186 different foreign chemicals found in the umbilical cords of newborn babies today. Yes, babies are coming into the world today pre-polluted. Wow. And here's the bad news. And don't kill the messenger. You and your family are increasingly being exposed to various environmental hazards, often without your knowledge. The good news, though, our guest today is going to guide us through understanding the unseen threats in our everyday environment while offering practical solutions for safeguarding the health of our families and especially our children. Dr. Tom O'Brien is a renowned functional medicine expert in environmental medicine and a leading voice in the field of holistic health and wellness. With an impressive career dedicated to uncovering the hidden impacts of environmental toxins on family health. He is an internationally recognized speaker focused on food sensitivities, environmental toxins, and the development of autoimmune diseases. Dr. O'Brien is considered a Sherlock Holmes for chronic disease. He is the author of You Can Fix Your Brain and The Autoimmune Fix. 
Welcome to the show, Dr. O'Brien. Yes. Woohoo! <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Pleasure to be with you. What a great uh, introduction. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And welcome, Dr. O'Brien. We are thrilled to have you with us today. I know listeners are going to get so much out of this show. This is such a hot topic. Everybody's dealing with something it feels like these days, whether it's them, their children, their relatives, almost impossible to avoid some of these things. So I know you have a lot of wealth to share. So I just want to dive right in. And starting from the beginning, what inspired you to focus on environmental medicine? Well, we have to go back 44 years. <laughs> and How is that possible, Dr. O'Brien? You were so young. <laughs> young of high. heart. Young <laughs> of heart, yes. I was an intern at the time and my ex and I could not get pregnant. And I called the seven most famous holistic practitioners I'd ever heard of. And I was able to reach them all and ask them, what do you do for infertility? They all told me what their approach was. I put a protocol together. We were pregnant in six weeks. Whoa. My neighbors in married housing who had been through artificial insemination, you know, we lived on campus. They'd been through artificial insemination. Nothing had worked. They asked if I'd work with them. And I said, well, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I don't think <laughs> it'll hurt you in any way. They were pregnant in three months. Wow. So now we're four months pregnant. We're hot to trot, you know, to go out and, and tell the world. And we tell our friends and our friend's sister in Wisconsin. I was in school in Chicago. In Wisconsin, she'd had three miscarriages. And she, can I come down, please? Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? So <laughs> I started I started treating patients out of my dorm room. No, no way. You're, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> but I was. And were you in med school at the time? Chiropractic school, yes. Oh, okay. And what I learned, there's not much in medicine that's all or every, but this was every. Every couple that had problems with fertility, every couple, irrespective of what the symptoms were, one of the contributing complications in every single case was they were eating foods they did not know were a problem for them mm. because it didn't give them gut pain. They felt oh. fine when they oh, ate my. the food, right? But we now know the science is really clear for every one person that has gut symptoms with a sensitivity to wheat, as an example, there are eight people that don't. They've got brain symptoms or skin symptoms. They've got psoriasis or acne. They've oh. got asthma. They've got abnormal pap smears. They've got joint pains, but they don't have gut symptoms. So they eat the food and they think it's okay. I feel fine when I eat sandwiches. They think <laughs> it's fine. So if you use your gut as the marker of whether or not a food is safe for you, you'll get it right one out of eight times. <laughs> and, oh, wow. and you'll get it wrong seven out of eight times. And so what we discovered was that every single person had as a contributor foods they were eating that were fueling more inflammation. Mm. Now, the Center for Disease Control tells us that 14 of the 15 top causes of death in the world today are chronic inflammatory diseases. The only one that's not is unintentional injuries, car accidents, things like that. But everything else is an inflammatory disease. So the 101, the basic 101 that everyone needs to think from is how am I fueling more inflammation in my body? It doesn't matter if you have a family history of dementia and you carry the APOE4 gene, which makes you vulnerable to Alzheimer's. It doesn't matter if your mother had asthma and your father has cardiovascular disease and you likely carry the genetics. It doesn't matter what your vulnerability is, what matters is if you're fueling mm -hmm. that vulnerability. Mm. Right. And we don't think like that. And we have to start thinking like that. How am I fueling inflammation in my body or in my child's body? Your mm -hmm. child's diagnosed with attention deficit. That is the easiest thing to fix when you know a big picture view. Yeah. You have to stop throwing gasoline on the fire that's yeah. manifesting in your child's brain. Right. These kids are eating like the worst food exactly. probably in the history of ever. And the parents are feeding it to them without even thought. And the schools are too. Well, the parents, so you know, the parents don't know because the parents' parents, you know, my generation, we just believed all the marketing that tricks yeah. is for kids. 
Right. Every spoonful of tricks is 50% sugar, 50% uh, pure teaspoon of sugar. So that's the trick. That's the trick. <laughs> right. Wow. Yeah, I was fed that trick. And then we spent our adult years trying to undo all that, right? That damage. That's exactly that. right. And that's the key to a higher quality of life is learning how to undo all of that. Mm -hmm. Learning the habits that we developed that we thought were okay because nobody told us. And the way you can tell about all of this, it's really easy. It's your immune system. The immune system is the armed forces in your body, the Army, mm. Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard. We call them <laughs> IGA, feels. IgG, IgE, IgM. It, they're <laughs> just the armed forces. They're there to protect you. Mm. So when your immune system gets activated, producing more inflammation, the question is, what's it trying to protect you from? Right. right. And when you identify what is overwhelming your system and your immune system's having to fight it and you eliminate that trigger, your inflammation markers go down. When your inflammation markers go down, every cell in your body regenerates, every single cell. We have an entire new body every couple of years. So are you regenerating more sick cells or are you regenerating healthier cells? When the inflammation goes down, you regenerate healthier cells. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So six months later, you go to church, you know, and you have somebody you haven't seen in a while. What happened to you? You look great. Did you have surgery? <laughs> no, no, no. I just found out what my triggers of inflammation were. And I'm gluten-free, dairy-free, added sugar-free. We got the plastic containers out of the kitchen. You know, yeah. I've got glass containers in the kitchen now. I've got organic nail polish, organic cosmetics. And you just go down the list and your friends say, wow, wow, because they're right. overwhelmed, right? Yeah. The, well, they're right. overwhelmed to hear this, but that's the secret. So you the want to be is, vibrant yeah. and healthy. That's the secret. How do I reduce my triggers of inflammation? Right. So important. So well said, Dr. O'Brien. This food sensitivity thing, would you say, because we've talked a little bit about this on the podcast people who go out and get a food allergy test, should they also do a food sensitivity? Do you think those tests are pretty accurate or? That's a really good question. Really good question. Sure. You know, I'm holding this thing in my hand. We call it an iPhone, right? And back in 1990, if I were to tell you, you know, in about 25, 30 years or so, I'm going to hold this little thing in my hand. It's about the size of my wallet. And I'm just going to push on the face of it a little bit. And within five seconds, I can tell you that the air particulate matter in Chicago today is 41. <laughs> and in San Diego, it's 37. It's a good day to exercise outside. But San Antonio, Texas, whoa, whoa, it's at 89. Do not exercise outside today in oh. San Antonio. I can tell you anything you want to know in the world because I've got the encyclopedia in my hand. And if I had told you that 30 years ago, you would have thought I was watching too much Star Trek. You say, well, that's impossible. What are you talking about? Science changes, science improves, and technology improves. Technology with laboratory testing has improved. And what people don't know is the tests your doctors are using, most of them were developed in the 1980s, the 1990s, and they're okay, but they're nowhere near the accuracy and the comprehensiveness of the tests of today. The okay. tests of today are called silicone chip technology. It's a whole nother world. And the mm. accuracy, Mayo Clinic wrote the first paper that I saw about this in January of 2016. So it's been seven years now that we've had these tests available, and they're changing the face of medicine. Mm. More and more doctors are learning about these tests, and they're including these tests. And once they include them, they stop doing the old tests because mm -hmm. these are much more accurate. Mm -hmm. They're called Zoomers. And for example, the wheat Zoomer. Okay. Because you, Never because heard of you zoom in on the problem and mm -hmm. there's nothing like it. And I lecture all over the world. You know, in October, I was in Sao Paulo, Brazil. In December, I was in Rome. In two weeks, I go to India. I travel all over teaching physicians about this mm -hmm. and they don't know this. But I look at the labs that are always at the conferences and they're in the vendors area for doctors to see who they are and what their services are they offer. And I look in all the catalogs, there's nothing that compares to the Zoomers. 
Hmm. So what I tell people all the time in interviews is go to my website, the dr.com, the doctor.com, just don't spell the word doctor out mm -hmm. and look at the blood tests, look at the zoomers, download hmm. the information, take it to your doctor and say, would you order this test, please? Oh, that's all you have to do? Yeah. Yeah. But okay. unfortunately, most doctors will say no because hmm. they don't know what it is. And, you know, they don't want to try something new. And if that's the case, you can order it on my website. That's oh. fine. I prefer the doctors order them, you know, so they learn about it. Yeah. But you get those tests back. There's a wheat zoomer, a dairy zoomer, an egg zoomer, a corn zoomer, a lectin zoomer. Well, what's the price point, Dr. O'Brien, for these tests? It depends on the test, but they're so inexpensive compared to, for example, in the wheat zoomer, there are 26 different markers it looks at for sensitivity to wheat. Mm. And most doctors are using tests that look at one marker, maybe mm. two, mm. and you pay $125 for that or something. Mm. Well, what about if you're looking at 26 markers? How much is that test? And right. it's about $400. The laboratory has mm -hmm. made it really competitive because they want the business. They're really smart business people. I wish I could have bought stock in them, but you know that. <laughs> That was not possible, but their technology is just cutting edge. Just so four hundred for one test, just for the wheat. So if you but you get twenty six different variations, you can. Look I know, at, but right? if yeah. you don't know what your trigger is, that could get expensive if you're having to order all those right. Zoomer tests, right. right? And what happens usually for people, depending on their symptom patterns, I will see on Zoom. I'll see one patient every two weeks or so because I just teach now. I feel I can have more impact teaching around the sure. world. But I just love being a Sherlock Holmes for really difficult cases, you know, and there are four tests that I recommend be done for anyone that's having a hard time with their health. It doesn't matter what it is. You start with these four tests. It's the introduction to the world of understanding mm -hmm. what's going on in your body. And that is the wheat zoomer, the total tox burden, because it looks at all the toxic chemicals you're exposed to the gut zoomer okay. and uh, because it looks at the microbiome and the neural zoomer plus because it looks at 53 markers of inflammation in your brain. Oh, uh, wow. And I can promise you, you know, we never get a normal back on a first visit on the brain zoomer. Oh. Everyone's mm. brain is inflamed. Everyone's. Okay. Now, it better be normal on follow-up tests after we've done our protocols. But people don't know. Oh, you know, I'm getting older. I don't remember the way I used to. Sometimes I don't know where my keys are and I have to look for them. Well, how old are you? Well, I'm 36. No, that's <laughs> not supposed to happen. That's right. brain damage yeah. right, right now yeah. that's going on. We get right? used to that, right? We normalize that in society yeah, because exactly. everybody's we, feeling that way. You know, to do all those tests, I think it's about $1,400 or so. But then you've got a big picture of what's going would, on in your body. Would insurance cover that? No, absolutely oh, not. Absolutely you don't? not. Oh, no. None yeah, of it? That's about I don't know. You know, some health plans like at end of year health savings accounts. Yeah, oh, those, okay. Okay. those you can, you bet. But, you know, what I say to patients when that comes up, look, it's up to you, but there's no way to know what's going on in your body and you can't address it until we find out what's going yeah. on. Sorry, I'm going down a little tangent here, but um, could the inflammation be from parasites? Would Absolutely. That That's why you do the gut zoomer, because it okay. looks at not only your good bacteria, but the bad bacteria and parasites. Okay. You bet. That's okay. very, very common. Very okay. common. Okay. Disease. I was going to say, Interesting. I know I've been reading so well, I mean, Ron and I did our first parasite cleanse when Ron probably Gosh, a while ago, 20 years ago. I don't want to date us. There like when I first met <laughs> you, I was reading books and I was like, we were dating and I'm like, you need to do a parasite cleanse with me. He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was smitten. So I did it right That's away. That's an unusual type of foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Excuse me. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. You have no That's, idea. <laughs> I, I had to go through a lot of hurdles, Dr. O'Brien, for sure. A lot <laughs> I of hurdles. Understand. Well, it looks <laughs> like it's worth it. <laughs> it worked. It was. It was worth it. And I got healthier in the process, which was good. <laughs> Dr. O'Brien, I'm curious, what are the most common environmental toxins affecting family health today? Yeah, that's a really good question. The most common source of environmental toxins is what's on the end of your fork. Most common and most prevalent. Now, if you're living in a moldy house, that may take priority because you're breathing mold 24-7. But the most common is what's on the end of your fork. And you don't know it's a problem because of the one out of eight rule. You know, if you eat something and you get sick every time you eat it, 
you'll stop eating it pretty soon. Or if you drink something and you throw up when you drink it, you'll find something else to drink, right? But when you don't have symptoms, when you eat a food, you assume it's okay. It's not. It's not. And it's the most common source. And you get the most bang for your buck in terms of change in your health direction when you identify the foods that you're sensitive to. That's most common. But the answer to your question is really two part because it depends on what generation I'm talking to. Mm. If I'm talking to couples of childbearing age, that's a whole nother ballgame. And I don't know if you guys want to go down this path, but women, young women are so toxic today and they have no idea that the nail polish that they're putting on their 10 little fingers and 10 little toes for the last 25 years, the phthalates and the nail polish are in your bloodstream in four to five minutes every time you apply it, or the makeup you're using that they got the laws passed, they don't have to say what's in the makeup. No. So you're putting this stuff on your skin, you have no idea what it is, and these toxic chemicals accumulate in your body. And you store leftover food in plastic storage containers in the refrigerator, the next day the food has phthalates in it from the plastic containers. And all of this accumulation, 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 that by the time women are of childbearing age, here's what happens. Chicago, 2016, 346 pregnant women in the eighth month of pregnancy, they check urine tests on them for phthalates, chemicals used to mold plastic. And they looked at five phthalates. There are many more, but they just looked at five including BPA or bisphenol A, the one in plastic bottles that many people have heard of. They put the results into quartiles, the lowest, the next, the third, and the highest. They followed the pregnancies and the babies of those pregnancies until the children turned seven years old. When they turned seven years old, they did Wexler IQ tests on these children. Once again, not much in medicine that's all or every, but this was every. Every child whose mother was in the highest category of phthalates in urine in pregnancy, compared to the children whose mothers were in the lowest category of phthalates in urine in pregnancy, every child in the highest category, their IQ was seven points lower, 6.7 to 7.4 points lower. Now, that doesn't mean anything to anyone. Until you understand a one-point difference in IQ is noticeable, a seven-point difference in IQ is the difference between a child working really hard, getting straight A's in school, and a child working really hard, really hard, getting mm. straight C's. This child doesn't have a chance in hell mm. of ever excelling. Now you just go to Google and you type in phthalates and neurogenesis, nerve growth. Here come the studies. The higher the phthalate level, the more inhibition in brain cell and nerve cell growth. Mm -hmm. So babies' brains never develop properly in utero because mom is so full of toxins, baby is swimming, the amniotic fluid is a toxic soup yeah. that mm -hmm. affects baby's brain development. Yeah. That is a primary reason why autism is going through the roof mm -hmm. in terms of the number of kids yeah. and why children at six years old are on antidepressants. And anti-anxiety is yeah. because their brains never developed properly. So I have to get to the younger generation and get this message across. So women of childbearing age, you do not get pregnant until you've gone through a six month to one year detox program. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Clean, clean out first. Then you have a chance of a healthy baby. Yeah. It's interesting. I know we have talked quite a bit about that and the new moms, their whole focus is on everything new, right? A new crib, new nursery, paint, carpet, new clothing, everything that's going to off-gas VOCs, volatile organic chemicals, which can have carcinogens. And then like you're talking about the phthalates and all the kids' products because it makes the product soft, the plastic soft. You've got phthalates and fragrances that make the scents longer and everything's fragrance for the baby. And so there's so much focus on when the baby gets here. And no focus. People rarely talk about what preparation to do before the baby comes and while before you get pregnant, like you're talking about. Yeah, that's critically important. You're absolutely right. Because no one's ever taught them. And this is all science. I'm not making this stuff up. You, oh, I know. You, We've been studying this, this for yeah. since 2005. Can those IQ and, points be recovered? 
can they be recovered? Yeah. Yes. First, can you, yeah. Okay. You change the environment. You have an entire new body every few years. And as children, you're growing so quickly. The question is, what kind of cells are you generating? Are you generating more sick cells, more dysfunctional cells, or are you generating healthier cells? And that is determined by the environment around the cell. It's called epigenetics, Mm -hmm. around the cells, around Mm -hmm. the genes. Mm -hmm. And so when you create an environment of more, I don't like the word purity, I mean cleanness, not toxic chemicals, but more Mm -hmm. clean, healthy chemical environment, then you generate healthier cells. So yeah, yeah again, as a so matter of fact, one more point, if I may, the Journal of the American Medical Association came out with a paper. They took attention deficit kids. Now, I have to explain this so you understand what the paper was about. I'm going to date myself, of course. Uh, when we'd go to the doctors as kids, you'd pee in a cup in the bathroom and you put the cup on the shelf on the wall and this thing turns around and a cup goes over to the other room on the other side of the wall, that's where the nurse is that does the urine test. That's called a lazy Susan. And the same device is in Chinese restaurant tables, the big round tables. There's a lazy Susan in the center to pass the food around to everybody so they can serve themselves. Your brain cells communicate to each other like lazy Susans, that the chemicals made in one brain cell go through the wall of the chemical into the next brain cell. And it gets modified a little bit And then that modified chemical goes through the wall to the next brain cell, like a lazy Susan. Your brain cell walls are made up of fats. When you eat bad fats, that's the raw material that your brain cell walls are made from. When you eat good fat, and fat is not a four-letter word. Fat is really healthy for you. When you eat good fat, then your brain cell walls are made up of the good fats. Mm. So Give us some good eat, fats. Give us a shout out for some good fats. Avocado, fish, nuts, olives, olive oil. Those are the types of fats. So when mom is eating French fries and mom is eating fast foods and prepared foods, mom's raw material that baby's brain is being made from, mm-hmm. you know, it's like cheap lumber. You don't use cheap lumber to build the frame of a house if you do. Mm-hmm. Well, your whole house is unstable. Your brain's unstable. Mm -hmm. We call that attention deficit, Mm -hmm. right? That's all it is. Mm -hmm. There's an instability of function. And you build new cells every day, every single day. So when you supply healthy, vibrant, raw material, your body will use these healthy materials to make new brain cells. And the result is a paper came out in the Journal of the American Medical Association a number of years ago. They took attention deficit kids. They gave them 1,000 milligrams of omega-3s. That's the good oils from fish. And six months later, the kids, their attention deficit was in remission. Mm -hmm. The vast majority of the kids were functioning so much better in school. Mm -hmm. They weren't truant. They weren't violent. It was dramatically different just by giving them 1,000 milligrams of fish oils because it changed the composition of the lazy Susans in the brain cells. Yeah. And then you've got all the food dyes too, right? That are linked to the hyperactivity. We um we interviewed somebody not too long ago on um he became an addict to Adderall. Yeah, Adderall. Adderall as an adult, you know, became an addict. Do you guys know why Adderall and Ritalin? They're speed. Yeah, that's what they are. Is speed. Yeah, they're like amphetamine based, aren't they? Yeah, aren't exactly. They amphetamine exactly. Salts? Yeah. Why do you give speed? to a kid or a person whose brain is not working very well. This is why. I had 13 cars in my undergraduate years that all cost less than $100. I had no money. You know, you buy a $75 car, it lasts you for a few months, and then it dies. So you, <laughs> so you, you take the plates and you get another one. What are those cars? You know, those cars were in such bad shape that they'd stall at red lights. And it needs a tune-up, but you don't pay for a tune-up for a car (laughs) like that. It costs more than the car, right? How do you stop a car from stalling at the red light? You push the clutch in and you rev the engine. Or you put it in neutral and you rev the engine. Uh... You're not hot-rodding. You just stop it from stalling. Mm -hmm. Light turns green, you drop it and drive, and off you go. Oh, okay. Ritalin and Adderall is revving the engine, trying to push the communication from one brain cell to the next brain cell mm. because the lazy Susans are so frozen. 
Mm -hmm. They don't work very well. Now, that's not quite exactly what happens, but it's a good visual to understand, well, how am I going to change my function of my brain? You change the architecture of your brain so it can function better. Well, how do I change the architecture of my brain? You supply the raw materials so that as cells rebuild, you build healthier, stronger cells. Yeah. Getting to the root, getting to the root cause, it always comes back to that because we're still in a society where Western medicine is still treating the symptoms, you know, with their quick pills and their quick fix versus like lifestyle. We need to get back to. Well, you know, we all trash Western medicine. And (laughs) I think that most doctors who go into study Western medicine, they really have pure heart. I mean, some of them going for the money, but most of them have pure heart. They really want to help humanity. I would agree. And they go into an education system that just beats them down. It beats them down and it makes them think the way they want them to think. And it makes them act and answer the way they want them to answer. And it's based on symptom relief. Mm -hmm. And so every doctor that comes out of their education is drilled into this line of thinking. And they just are not exposed. They're starting to actually, Harvard Medical School is changing. They've got a lot of comprehensive, holistic healthcare in the curriculum now, which is really great. But I don't want to blame our doctors. It's not their fault until they're exposed when they have three or four or 10 patients say, I gave up gluten and I feel better. And they just ignore it and say, well, it's all in your head. Yeah, exactly. Shame on those guys. Shame on them. Right, right. Until they're exposed. But when they're exposed, and if they just put their toe in the water to learn a little bit, wow, I didn't know this. Wow. (laughs) Right. Wow. And then they want to learn a little bit more. I mean, at IFM, the Institute for Functional Medicine, our our courses are always sold out. Wow. Medical doctors just flood to us because they learn so much. And And they often say, sometimes with tears, they say, This is why I went into medicine. And they cry. Usually it's some of the women who are more connected to their emotions. And they say, this is what I wanted to do in my life. And I'm so grateful to have the opportunity. Because it's like... Functional medicine is the coolest. coolest. It is the coolest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've interviewed a lot of doctors on our podcast. And I would say that's very common with all of them. They either started off traditional route and changed... Right, Ron? I mean, I don't think it's pretty rare that we interviewed anybody that kind of didn't have that light bulb. Oh, for sure. Yeah, there was always a story or something behind why they did that. Yeah. And speaking of, we lost our sister-in-law to breast cancer a couple of years ago. We tried to get her to do the functional route and she kind of did. She did do that and simultaneously was still going the traditional route. So it was, she was kind of doing both. Her traditional doctor told her, she asked about diet. Because the functional medicine doctor was telling her, you've got to eliminate sugar and do the keto and starve the cancer. And she went back to the regular doctor and said, what do you think about my diet? And he's told her, oh, your diet has nothing to do with it. Yeah. The next question she should have asked is, how many courses in nutrition have you had? Yeah. Yeah. And the answer is zero. Zero or one. Out of 126 medical schools in the U.S. and Canada... 23% of them had three courses of nutrition or more. The rest of them don't. They have a weekend course. They just don't know anything about it. That's crazy. So they carry the, it doesn't have anything to do with it. That's because they weren't taught. They weren't taught. Yeah, and they're passing on. Probably a good segue. So Dr. Brian, how does your approach to holistic health address these environmental challenges? Oh, it's really easy. You do the test to find out what is your armed forces fighting? What's your immune system fighting? If it's fighting volatile organic solvents, we have to get the volatile organic solvents out of your body and get them out of your environment. If it's fighting gluten, we have to get gluten out of your environment because it's inflammation that fuels every single disease. Mm -hmm. It's always inflammation. So you have to stop throwing gasoline on the fire. The question is, is it gasoline or kerosene? Mm -hmm. Where is the inflammation coming from? It's that simple. And you could have a gluten insensitivity or allergy and not have gut issues. You could instead not even have a symptom. Are you saying? Oh, my goodness. Only one out of eight have gut symptoms. Only one out of eight. I can't say that often enough. Okay. Professor Yehuda Schoenfeld at Tel Aviv University in Israel. 
He's the godfather of autoimmunity. What I mean by that, when medical doctors want to go back and get a PhD in immunology, many of them go to Tel Aviv because they're world famous. 26 of the graduates of that program, Sean Feld's program, there are many, many more, but 26 chair departments of immunology in medical schools and hospitals around the world. They're his students. Wow. This is the godfather, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He published a paper last year on the benefits of a gluten-free diet in non-celiac autoimmune diseases. And he identified 28 different autoimmune diseases, looked at over 80 research papers, and he said in 63.5% of the papers confirmed that up to 87% of autoimmune patients get better on a gluten-free diet. Mm, So it's not every patient every time, Mm -hmm. but it's more than half the patients get better on a gluten-free diet. And that was autoimmune myocarditis, which Mm. is the inflammation of your heart. Autoimmune Hashimoto's thyroid disease, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple Mm. sclerosis, scleroderma, psoriasis. 28 different diseases from the godfather say, you know what? Most of the people get better if they go on a gluten-free diet. It's like, what? Yeah. Yeah. So you do the wheat zoomer test and you see, is my immune system fighting wheat? If it is, you're done with wheat. If it comes Uh back negative, you're one of the few that haven't crossed the line of tolerance yet. Oh, that's interesting. What percentage don't subject themselves to a wheat? Yeah, battle. this test is extremely accurate as long as you have total immunoglobulins, meaning your immune system has enough soldiers. If your immune system is depleted, you can't test the immune system to see it, if there's a problem or not. Mm-hmm. But right. as long as you have total immunoglobulins, it's mm-hmm. a very, very accurate test, 97 to 100%. And we've only had two normals come back in the last seven years. Oh, that's astronomical. Wow. Well, the bigger question, Dr. O'Brien, is should everyone eliminate gluten? Well, I can't say that because then I'd sound like a nutcase. (laughs) (laughs) But everyone who has a health condition that's not getting better the way they want it to needs to do the wheat zoomer just to see. You need to do the most accurate test out there. And it can be done with a finger prick. Oh, yeah. You don't Mm. even need a blood draw. You can do a finger prick and maintain the same degree of sensitivity. Really? So the Zoomer test, you don't even have to go to a lab. It's like an at home? That's correct. Oh, okay. That's great. Some of the tests require a blood sample, not a finger prick, but the food test will be just as accurate with a finger prick test. Oh, right. Okay. We did that, Ron. We did that with an at home lab. Probably the old test, though, not this. Not yeah. the Zoomer. <laughs> yeah, so it wasn't the Zoomer. It wasn't Something the from the 80s we tested ourselves with, right? Yeah. So what if, <laughs> if you guys are interested, I propose to you that both of you do a wheat Zoomer, total tox burden, and a, a neural Zoomer plus, and I'll come on the show and interpret your test results for you. Yeah, oh, that'd okay. be great. I'd be interested in that. Yeah, I have some gut issues minor, not major. And I don't eat gluten for the most part. I don't eat bread. I very rarely will have gluten at all. And no dairy. We're vegan. We do have no dairy. And now we're doing a parasite cleanse right now, actually, because we haven't done one in a while. And Ron's having a massive (laughs) gout attack. I'm I'm putting on a brave face right now, but yeah, my hand is quite swollen. Yeah. Yeah, Understood. Understood. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're all, we're very healthy, but. If you guys want to do that, I'll interpret it for you. And, and then the whole world or your world can uh, <laughs> oh, no, our deepest, darkest secrets. What's <laughs> going on in our gut? <laughs> well, yeah, we had a functional MD that we had listened to speak one time. You probably know who she is, Dr. Amy Myers. Sure. She said, you know, she sees people from all over the world and with autoimmune diseases and everything. She always takes them off dairy and gluten first. And usually, like almost always, the symptoms go away regardless of what the issue is. Yeah, that's why I asked you. Right. Like, or greatly reduced. Greatly reduced, yeah. And even ADHD and autism. Even autism, I've heard if, if they do this early enough with children and get them off gluten and dairy, you know, at the first signs of autism. We know a woman who started a gluten-free, dairy-free bakery here in Southern California and her boys were showing signs of autism at a very early age and she immediately cut that out and they actually did a complete 180. 
they are very healthy now. And she opened a bakery mm-hmm. to support other moms who need that. Yeah. So that was a really good. So shout out to Sensitive Sweets in Fountain Valley. Right. Yes. <laughs> and, and Dr. Brown, well, my respectful to your time here. Can you share some strategies in the meantime for reducing exposure to environmental toxins at the home? Sure. You know, I've written two books, just two books. One of them, The Autoimmune Fix, won National Book Award. It's really a great book and has helped a lot of people. And then second one, You Can Fix Your Brain. And it was number one in seven categories on Amazon in terms of oh, wow. function. Woo. So I'm very proud of them. In You Can Fix Your Brain, I could have entitled it, You Can Fix Your Home Environment. You can fix your heart. You can fix your joints. It doesn't matter. It's these big picture concepts of how to clean up your life. In You Can Fix Your Brain, there are 36 different to-dos, things to check and to do. But one of them, the home detox guide that we put together room by room, you know, and you can get it on my website. It's at the dr.com detox dash by by dash room. We'll put that in the show notes at the end of the show. Great. Too. Yes. Yeah. Great. Great. Writing that down. You know, and I've just started talking about the things to do. You know, for example, this kind of blows people away. Have you ever like cut yourself or something and you pour some hydrogen peroxide on it and there's little white bubbles killing bacteria, right? Yes. That's a good thing. Get a shot glass and put some hydrogen peroxide in it and put your toothbrush in there. <laughs> okay. And notice what happens. There's a volcano eruption of all <laughs> oh, the no. bacteria on your toothbrush. Uh, you're inoculating every day when you uh, brush your teeth with toxic bacteria. Uh, do you throw away your toothbrush after one use? What's the best way to deal with that? Oh, no. uh, there's two ways of approaching it. One is maybe once a week, just soak in some peroxide for less than a minute. doesn't take long at all. Other people, some doctors recommend brush your teeth with hydrogen peroxide. Because it kills bad bacteria, it doesn't kill good bacteria. Right. And many people have heard of how important is the bacteria in your gut, the microbiome, and it is critically important. If there's only one thing you're going to do to be healthier, it's build a healthy, diverse microbiome. That's mm. most important. Right, because isn't it 70% of our immune system is in our gut? That's mm-hmm. correct. But there's over 800 families of bacteria in your mouth, and we swallow about a liter a day of saliva, a full liter. And so if you've got too much toxic bacteria in your mouth, you're inoculating your gut all day, every day with toxic Um, bacteria. Right. So you have to build a healthy microbiome. And so you learn how to do that. But why do dentists give antibiotics before they start working in your mouth? There's only one reason. It's because, you know, when they squirt water in and you lean over in the porcelain tub and you spit the water out and there's blood in the water, pink water, they just gave you leaky gums. Mm. And leaky gums take three days, three to four days to heal. Mm. But in the meantime, all that bacteria that's in your oral cavity and your mouth can go through the leaky gums into the bloodstream. And if you've Uh. got too much strep in your mouth, and many people do, we've heard of strep throats when it's really bad. If you have too much strep in your mouth, strep gets in your bloodstream. If it starts to build up and colonize, your immune system fights strep, but strep looks, the amino acid structure of strep, that's what the antibodies to strep fight. They look for the amino acid structure to kill the strep. The amino acid structure of strep looks like the amino acid structure of the valves of your heart. And the antibodies will attack the valves of your heart. That's rheumatic fever. Mm. That'll kill you. That's the only reason why dentists give antibiotics, because if you've got antibiotics in your bloodstream and then you get leaky gums, a little strep goes in, but the antibiotics are in the bloodstream to kill the strep. So it never has a chance to colonize and activate an immune response. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. yeah. A little off topic here. If you had a cut in your mouth, I've put clodial silver on there just to make sure it's, you know, would you recommend that as well? Yeah, you bet. That's one of the great antibacterials. Oh, okay. shout out to Colloidal Silver. Aren't they trying to take that off the market? Well, there's rumors of that. I don't know. We don't heard know that. that. Stock yeah. up, guys. Yeah, <laughs> Stock right. up on your silver. You know, but in the bathroom, the next thing in your bathroom, put the toilet seat down before you flush. Yes, mm. we do that. Because if you don't, just go on Google and YouTube and type in toilet seat flushing. And you see <laughs> they use blue lights. 
and you yeah. see what comes <laughs> splashing you it's know, so up gross. into the air. Yeah, it's gross. And you just don't realize it because you don't see it. Right. Just little things like that. Or if you have That's recurrent a great sore throats or ear infections or nasal infections mm-hmm. or sinus, you have to clean your shower head. Shower heads are loaded with biofilm of pathogenic bacteria. Mm. Uh, loaded. Okay. If you're in a warm climate, you have to clean your shower head every three months. And the handouts on my site tell you how to do that. And if you're in a cold climate, you have to clean the shower head every year. Okay. And could you just do vinegar or do you need like something stronger? You need a minimum 8% vinegar. vinegar. The, okay. The stuff at the Grocery store is 3%. It's not strong enough. Okay. So Amazon's got it. It's like- Amazon's got it. Yeah. 25 bucks for a two-year supply. I mean, it's very inexpensive. Yeah. These are really niche, great tips that you've given that people don't think about. And I've noticed when we did this, sorry guys, little TMI, but when we started closing the lids before flushing the toilet, I noticed the toilets were so much dirtier. Like, what is all this stuff around the toilet that never was there before, right? All of a sudden, the toilets got really dirty. And you were like, oh, that's the stuff that was going in the air or Mm. on the counters or on the floor before. Yeah. Mm. And that's when I realized how powerful that was. I think they did studies where people leave their toothbrush on the counter where the spray, the toilet spray was getting on the toothbrushes. (laughs) So it's like, okay, now you're putting that in your mouth. That's exactly right. Those are things we don't think about. So you learn these little simple tips. And once again, my book, You Can Fix Your Brain, has got 36 of those different kinds of tips. But the handout, detox-by-room. Yeah. I've got the kitchen, the bathroom, the bedroom, living quarters, you know, the house plants. NASA did the studies. NASA, they never talk about this with reporters, but the astronauts were going a little loopy in space. And, you know, the astronauts, hello, Houston, blah, 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 blah. And Houston said, hello, shuttle. Can you repeat that, please? And and they do it again. And then at Houston, they just look at each other. It's like, whoa. And what they found out was that they were losing focus in space. And it was because of the toxic air. Mm. And because everything's plastic in there. (laughs) And the phthalates from the plastic. So NASA financed the studies on how to build healthy air. And you build healthy air with house plants. And they showed that two six inch house plants in a 10 by 10 room absorb 74% of the toxins in the air. And so you go to the local nursery and you buy 20 little house plants. So you mm-hmm. put two in each of kids' bedrooms everywhere. And not only do they absorb the toxins in the air, but they also generate more oxygen in the mm-hmm. air. Yeah. They are little air scrubbers. Yeah. Certain plants. I think it's 50 plants they found. Yeah, there's a really wonderful book written by the Dr. Wolverton that I oversee so I that study and it highlights the plants and it's 50 summer flowering, the poinsettia, there's the philodendron. And I always tell people it's such a great housewarming gift, you know, because you're literally giving someone the gift of health versus a bottle of wine. Why not bring a house plant that is literally going to make them healthier? Bring in That's more green nice in. Yeah. Well, gosh, this was so great. Clearly, we could go on and on and on. There's so many other questions we didn't get to. We'll have to have you back, Dr. O'Brien. But where can the audience learn more about you? Oh, thank you. Well, the dr.com, and there's all kinds of things there. We have an event coming up in a couple of months. You know, I've done two events in my life like this. The first one, we put together what was called the Gluten Summit. And it was the first online health event ever, ever. And that was 10 years ago. And we made it up just how to do it. We just tried. (laughs) And and as a result, my friends said, how did you do that? And I said, I don't know. We just made it up. And they said, well, can we talk to your team for specifics? And I said, sure. My team came to me and said, "Uh, Doc, your friends all want to do summits. You know, like Mark Hyman and Isabella Wentz and Deanna Minnick, that they all wanted to do summits. I said, we should start a company. And I said, no, no, it's not my thing. But you guys go ahead. We did great together. Go Mm -hmm. for it. That was the start of a company called Health Talks Online. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. It came from us. You know, we just made all this up. And then I did an event in 2016 called the Betrayal, the Autoimmune Disease Solution They're Not Telling You. And over 2 million have seen that. Fantastic. And it's helped a lot of people. So we're doing our third event now. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not a professional at this, but when there's a passion, 
Yeah. Nothing gets in the way. So I've interviewed the world leaders like Sean Feld and many, many others on this topic of inflammation and how do we reduce all of the sources of inflammation in our body. And it's called the inflammation equation, decoding the path to optimal well-being. Mm -hmm. So that comes out in a couple of months and we're really looking forward to that. Yes. Okay, we'll definitely put a link to that. We'll have to get that from you when it's live. And we'll put that in the show notes. Yeah, guys, don't miss that. And we'll put the links to your books and your website as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes. Well, all right. As always, we'll have all the links in the show notes at ronalisa.com forward slash podcast. See you in two weeks and get ready to up level your health. Bye. Thanks, Dr. Dr. O'Brien. Thank you so much. Thank you. This episode of the Healthy Home Hacks podcast has ended, but be sure to subscribe for more healthy living strategies and tactics to help you create the healthy home you've always dreamed of. And don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best content. See you on the next episode.